Hello there. Welcome to episode number 19 of uh, Spontaneous Conversations. Uh, this is Ravi Gundlapalli, founder and CEO of Mentor Cloud. And with me, I have. Uh, I'm Rajesh Sethi. I'm a serial entrepreneur uh, and I'm co conspirator with Ravi on this podcast series. And today we have a very exciting guest, a genius in the in the world of marketing, um, you know, visiting us in Silicon Valley. His name is Sterling Valentine. Sterling, thank you so much for joining our podcast today. Thank you for having me and welcome everybody who's listening wherever you are, whenever you are. We're happy to have you. Yeah, we picked a topic uh, which was very interesting, Ravi. We first started with should we do persuasion as a topic and then uh, Sterling said, um, you should do something even better, something that will eliminate persuasion, something building products that don't require pe- for us to persuade people to engage with uh, them or buy them. So Sterling, what is the reason you picked the topic? Well, you guys were kind enough to ask me to do it, and I was happy to do it, but I wanted to make sure we would approach it at the highest level possible to give the maximum benefit for our listeners because everybody's time is already being taken up by so many other things. My suggestion was, instead of trying to master the art of persuasion, why don't we master the art of eliminating the need for persuasion in the first place? Hmm. So the best way to do that would be to create situations that are so mutually beneficial that persuasion is completely unnecessary. So instead of, I always believe that the best way to solve a problem is to prevent it from happening. So we could master the art of persuasion, but that puts us in a confrontational position where we always have to persuade somebody to our point of view. So we're, we become better arm wrestlers. But I would love to not have to arm wrestle in the first place. So how can we eliminate the need for, for persuasion? I thought that would be a good place to start a conversation. We're never going to completely eliminate the need for persuasion, but how can we set it up so that things are mutually beneficial and don't need to be pushed or forced or cajoled into doing something? Yeah, because you know, the, the, just the word persuasion itself almost implies, almost implies that um, you are, whatever you do are going to say, you are going to have to make the other person move or you know take an action. Because the persuasion, motivation, you know, motivator means to make somebody move. So it always takes more energy to move somebody rather than instead if you inspire them, and they move with their own weight, with their own desire, with their own, you know, beliefs. It's you don't. It's almost happening at you know zero force from your side. So, if entrepreneurs can really learn that their products, their ideas, their companies naturally draw people, then there's really no need to persuasion. So that's why I am so excited by this topic. So I think Sterling, what is one thing that you recommend entrepreneurs should think about to eliminate persuasion? Well, we start with the fundamental position of. We need to get something done. We, we have a goal in mind. We have a product to sell. We have a nonprofit organization cause to a- achieve. We want to make some transformation in the world, some result. We're here. We want to be there. We analyze the gap. Who can help us get there? So if you sell aluminum siding, you need aluminum siding prospects to sell aluminum siding to. If you have a nonprofit organization, you need somebody to donate. And most of the time, I think this is where we, we start too far down in the decision-making tree. We, we start down at the part of, okay, where do I find people that I can persuade to my way of thinking? And that's traditionally been the way it usually works, but isn't it wonderful when things are seamless? You know, I I really believe that discipline is inefficient, and whenever possible, I'd rather replace discipline with joy. I'd Mm -hmm. rather replace uh, immediate um, buy-in, you know, instead of having to make a persuasion in the first place. So how can we design our needs? How can we design these transformations that we want to have happen in the world? in such a way that baked right in is, you know, benefit for somebody else. How can we make a mutually beneficial situation where the other party is already attempting to achieve goals that they would selfishly try to achieve anyway, except that when they do so, it also benefits us. So in the very design of what we're setting out to do, before we set out one foot onto the journey, maybe we can adjust the journey so that we don't have to travel very far. So if we can roll back the decision tree one level and say, Instead of how can I persuade people to do this or believe this or pay for this or whatever, maybe I can look at how can I build it so that people flock to it, naturally want it, embrace it, and I have to turn people away. Eliminating the persuasion is a goal that we should have, 
before we ever even set foot out to try to persuade people. We may we may not need to do it at all if we design it right. Make sense? Yeah, you know, in one of our conversations, actually, um, you said something about it's not about it's not about us. It's about you. And uh, so, if you make everything about the other person, then the other person is actually coming to you because you're talking their language. Can you expand on that? Well, I love the concepts of the advocate and the avatar. I think these are very powerful frameworks that we can use in whatever it is we're doing, whether it's a traditional selling, persuading process, or even in the design of something at the, at the preliminary blueprints architectural stage. The avatar is the person who we're trying to influence or trying to achieve some kind of compliance from. And the more we can put ourselves in their shoes, we can better try to see how what our project is could help them solve their problems. So the less we put ourselves in our avatar shoes, the more we're just hammering somebody on the head that we don't really understand their position. And the less rapport, connectivity, congruency we have with the other party, the less effective we're going to be. So pretty soon it basically becomes, just buy it, damn it. I don't care if it makes any sense to you. It becomes a, a, a you know, shaking them by the shirt. I just want you to do what I want you to do. I haven't really done the homework of paying attention. If it's actually any good for you, just comply already. You know, <laughs> So that's like the worst case scenario down the spectrum. Um, but if we can really place ourselves in the avatar's shoes, who is the person that we're trying to help? What is their problem that they're experiencing? What is their context? What does their life look like? How, where are they trying to get to anyway? Uh, a great question is, how can this project of mine help you achieve your goals? This is a powerful question because now it's a design question. I even ask people sometimes, if you were designing this project, whatever it is, uh, what would you do? If you could wave your magic wand, how would you make it better for you to serve your own selfish needs? Not to do me a favor, but to help you get wherever it is you're going. Uh, or if another great question tool is, if you own stock in me or my product or my not product, if you own stock, meaning that the decisions that I make put money in your pocket if I make the right ones, or cost you money that you've already paid stock, you know, if I drag your investment down into the toilet, if I do the wrong thing, what would you have me do if you were me? Mm. Really putting ownership on it and, and allow, you know, really trying to c integrate with the avatar. And then the other, quickly, the other part about the advocate is the more we try to put ourselves in the avatar's shoes, the more we become an advocate for them. And an advocate is different than a salesperson. An advocate, imagine if you're in, in a courtroom, for example, and some, something's happening that affects you, and your attorney stands up behind you, puts his hand on your shoulder, and says, My client deserves, you know, your honor. I object, you know, this is somebody advocating for, on your behalf. This is somebody, um, standing up for you, having your back, caring for you, uh, you know, what happens to you affects them, that kind of thing. Um, there's a big difference between, by the way, the words customer and client. A customer is somebody who buys from you. A client is somebody who's in your care. Mm. Big difference. So as an advocate for an avatar, you already start out just by framing it that way at a higher level of service and connectivity and congruency than you ever would if okay, look, i got prospects over here, and I'm a salesperson. Let's roll up our sleeves and do battle. Well, already you're, you're down the decision tree. You've already made some certain decisions about your relationship. So it kind of, in a sense, it's already too late. You've, you've established a conflict. And we're going to win this sales war, gentlemen, if we have to beat the clients into submission. You know, that's where you're starting at. But if you can say, who is our avatar? What do they need? And how are we advocates for them? Maybe you can come to a different, better closer understanding, higher level of service, and maybe make it effortless. Come up with a different question, have a different answer, and maybe they're lining up to buy and you don't have to do anything. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. See, I was listening to a talk from our friend Anir Ayal. So also, he also talks about designing products in such a way that people don't have to be persuaded. Right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that he, he talked about was... Uh, he gave an example of an email. Nobody needs persuasion to use email because they, they're just always constantly checking, did I get a new email? And in fact, when they send an email, they don't get any immediate benefit, but it puts a trigger for the future saying, did I get a response to that email? Opens a loop. Opens a loop and they can't not close it because in their mind they have to complete it. And it also talks about WhatsApp. No need to persuade because we all have global friends and then you want to talk to them, it makes it very easy to just add their phone number and make a phone call. And after that, you are 
got stuck with it because now you are you're always thinking what has come what have my friends told us no need for any persuasion there if uh, we design habit forming products uh, then uh, only one time you need to raise awareness for the products and after that they self persuade themselves or in fact you know if you if you just use the example of whatsapp every user became an advocate of the platform right so same as hotmail in the first time same as hotmail oh, yeah. you know so another way to completely eliminate persuasion is it's not the whatsapp guy calling me and telling me ravi you need to download whatsapp my mm-hmm. friend is telling me yeah so the social proof automatically eliminates the whole process of you know the company persuading a customer correct and this is why partnering with your prospects partnering with your uh people who you think need to be persuaded more earlier and more often in the process the more you partner with them the more that they can design the process and the product and everything so that it's it benefits them from the start uh Eric Ries talks about it in lean startup where he wants you to iterate and fail fast and and reproduce have have more and more uh minimum viable products that you test and then you come back and get the feedback and test again and release things in a minimum viable fashion because he wants you to partner with your potential buyers or users earlier and more often so instead of taking your funding going 18 months into the into the lab and not coming out until you finish your frankenstein creation and then bring it to everybody and say congratulations happy birthday here's your product and they say you know we don't want that that you fail you know that's not what we were interested in you burn through your money and your time it's too late so he says slap something together and in 30 days release and say what do you think of this what would you change go back in the lab so and you can go back 18 times if you do a 30 day iteration cycle by the 18th time you really partnered with your your you know prospect or your user base or whatever instead of just hoping to, you know to now that we've made something we're going to have to take this thing and sell it and persuade you know because we've only we didn't partner with our our user base or our customers or something so partnership is a great framework to to look at instead of yeah. um top down command and control we've got to move these units look at it from a partnership of how how would you like us to help you how, how would you make this better what would you design if you had the ma- magic wand that kind of thing partnership is a powerful framework yeah even uh, before the lean startup uh, reed hoffman the founder of uh, co-founder of linkedin yeah, he has a famous quote saying if you're not embraced by your first product release you've launched then you've launched it too late exactly right i was thinking that from a from an entrepreneur perspective right um the art of persuasion or the act of it can be actually be very expensive because you know some will some won't and you're unnecessarily spending all your energy on on pure moving statistics people. right yeah. on moving people the, the strategy you are mentioning in in the conversation today is 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 truly brilliant because you can put a same amount of energy on the other end and your funnel will be much better because you are talking the language of the advocate you're talking instead of instead of just saying i'm going to persuade 1000 people and i expect a 5% conversion it sounds so dumb in a way you know because you have to talk in statistics why don't you do the 1000 maybe a bit more intelligently so your conversion is 1000 mm-hmm. mm. and this is where we learn from causes you know when uh, when gandhi did his famous uh, you know salt march he didn't send a, a memo to everybody with a post <laughs> and whatsapp a direct, message a direct, i'm walking everybody please follow me he didn't send a direct response copy written postcard of the features and benefits of why the salt march would be a good idea he just did something created something or tapped into something that was in everybody else's best interest to do as well and they voluntarily filed in behind him he didn't it wasn't a planned you know a campaign of crusade where they went door to door and signed people up and got a petition it just spontaneously happened because in that particular instance he was part of something bigger that other people felt the need to so there was zero persuasion required they persuaded themselves they joined and you see this in many social movements as people just do it because it's it's what they want to do so how can we how can we create desire instead of persuade how can we mm-hmm. tap into you know what's in it for you why why should you do this why would i do it if i were again the advocate and the avatar why would i do it if i were you with this work on me i mean persuasion is useful Don't get me wrong and and I've spent a lot of time studying ways to do it but I prefer to not need it and I would rather have people study how to not need it than to be good at it it should be a weapon of last defense when you've exhausted all the other possibilities instead of your first weapon because it's it's inefficient compared to 
I mean, would, would, would you rather have sales that you, you got from kung fu tactics and dark arts that you learned, or a, a, an army behind you marching to the same place that you're going to that you never had to say a word to them? It's, it's a big difference. It's In fact, uh, so yeah. We are getting close to the 15, 15 minutes. minutes. So should we all say the last uh, comment yes. on this topic? Yeah. Shall I? Um, so I was thinking the uh, basically what I've learned from from the short short conversation, uh, Mr. Erling, we would definitely love to have you back. Is eliminate persuasion from from the source. For basically, the entrepreneur doesn't do the persuasion. Do everything where your users persuade other users to use it. So we are essentially doing persuasion, but you're not doing it. Or actually, you're just allowing people to persuade themselves. Persuade themselves or tell other friends. I guess persuasion is happening if I've decided I want to do it because I want to do it. I guess I've had a conversation with my own self and persuaded my own self, but it's a lot better. It's, it's the best ringing endorsement of all. If I can have Robbie persuade Robbie. Exactly. Because <laughs> you're, you're the one you're going to listen to the most. Yes. You're the key influencer. You're the key influencer. And you love your voice. Exactly. And you listen to it. Yeah. Great. So the last comment from me is that uh, uh, the, what I took away is that the, for any product there are a set of people, if the product is designed right, there are a set of people who will self-persuade themselves, which means rather than doing a spray and pray kind of campaign, we just go back to the drawing board and see who are the people that uh, require very low persuasion or somebody who will self-persuade themselves to say, I love this product, give it to me. We have to hunt for those people that requires more thinking. Yeah, so, excellent. Well, Sterling, thank you so much, and have a safe flight today back home. And uh, this is Ravi Gudlapali signing off. Uh, you can find more about me at mentalcloud.com. And this is Rajesh Sethi, and uh, you can find more about me on my website, rajeshsethi.com. Sterling, where can they find more about you? Uh, SterlingValentine.com, and of course, listen to Raj and Ravi, because uh, I shouldn't have to persuade you to, but if you've got any value, you've probably already persuaded yourself. <laughs> what a great ending for Sterling. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very guys. Much.